I'm back to my original hand and uh, going to continue working with this um, as far as poly reduction. So, so far I've been using uh, this mesh, which is uh, kind of like a medium resolution where all the triangles are laid out really nicely. There's some stretching in here in the back, so that obviously warrants some sort of retopology. Um, but, you know, you might want to consider, depending on um, whether you want to create a base mesh, a true base mesh, and then develop all new detail based on that, uh, you might want to reconsider or consider re uh, reducing the topology first before and you may have to go and do that a few times it's kind of an iterative process um, before you retopologize so you can do a reduced and a retopo re, uh, re and uh, you could do it the other way around as well you could do a retopo and then a reduce I mean there's all sorts of uh, benefits to uh, reducing the geometry so let's go ahead and uh, pick this I'm gonna go to mesh reduce and let's talk a little bit about what we have in here. There's a mesh reduce, which is linked directly to the target face count. So if I set this to uh, 80%, it's reducing down from whatever it is to about 10,000, uh, which means that uh, 10,000 is 20%, so 100% is, uh, is uh, 50, 50, uh, roughly 50,000 faces. Um, and we can also control a triangle fit and in the case of uh, like a reduction we're really less interested in making um, uniform triangles because we don't want to end up with triangles we want to end up with quadrangles and it's more important to actually fit the model so that we're picking up on as much of the volume that we have here while reducing as much as possible so we could do a, a reduced mesh you can see this is actually quite fast and it gives you some triangles that definitely are stretching but again because we're going to do a retopo based on this we're less interested in uh, pretty uniform triangles and more interested in less geometry so I've basically eliminated 80 percent of the geometry which is a significant step down and now we can go back into a retopologize and new operation and let's say we'll call this one uh, test test and there we go and let's go ahead and uh, base this target face count at the, on the same number uh, you can use curves so we can go in here and just set hard constraints again and what's nice about this too is that when I did the reduction um, the curve stayed exactly in place it doesn't really affect the curves at all so you can lay out the curves first on the high resolution detail take those with you to the reduced mesh and then continue using them as constraints for your retopo. Uh, we can go ahead and go back and turn on uh, curves to copy as well, do a retopo. This retopo is going to be a little faster than the retopos we did before simply because there was a lot there was more geometry to deal with. And once that comes back we get our uh, geometry. You can see that our curves are really defining where the topology is going and so we get edges laid down based on those hard constraints and if I grab this uh, geometry here real quick we can uh, drop down in here turn uh, the source on as well and let's go ahead and grab the test geometry and move this over so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison okay so there it is and if I uh, take this you can see that uh, in this case uh, we have uh, you know about uh, four levels created uh, in our geometry we're looking at the highest level so we can go ahead and take this down a bit and see what the topology looks like it's very simple in this case but it's also very clean um, so this actually might be for a lot of things a better way to do it you know we we're missing out on some of the detail in here and that's simply because we've decimated this uh, by 80 percent and so there's there's definitely something uh, that we've given up there but if sculpting a base shape is what we're after then you know this is uh, a good way to give yourself a solid base to, to work from and then add all the detail on top